knows? He seems to always be getting his bat. How does he get a his big bat? Right? It seems like know. so many times we cast him, we're like, Cuckoo, he's always super dominant on these two heroes, and he always does seem to get it. So we'll see how they're going to be able to make use of it versus that one, because like the panel. A headdress level, look at headdress that. Headdress level one to get Wait, that bonus changing, HP regen. Changing the meta. So let's see. Look at all the heroes of Liquid if, when they are going to be in this tri lane. 7.1 health regen per second in an aggro tri lane. Have to imagine they'll get a Bassy on someone very early too. So this can be a pretty strong one. They Gosh. really want to ensure that Miracle just is able to farm either versus the Batrider or just pull him away from the bat. So that's probably what they're going to be doing. Even with that Divine Favor, they can, they can you know, dodge lanes as we've seen team, teams do quite a lot. Here's the uh, TNC, as we've seen them playing a lot, they uh, they really like their Chen as well, right? They so do. this one was oh, they do. kind of stealing it, right? AU really Chen. likes his Chen, so. It's been first pick so many times. Yep, you have to imagine that they have a really good idea about how to play around this hero. So we're going to see how they can execute versus Liquids, as Liquid, they've played this combo a lot. They like their Chen Tusk so much as they're able to get really active on the map early on, bring GH all over the place for free with that Divine Favor as well, and make aggressive plays. Yeah, we're seeing sort of across the draft, right? A lot of heroes that we're seeing time and time time again here at CI, but I'd yes. say probably the, the, the rarest out of the bunch is the, the Troll on the Tusk. Yes. Compared to all the other heroes, like all the other eight heroes, I feel like we've we've lost count of the times that we've seen teams playing. Absolutely. And that could bode well, very well for, for, for TNC, with a very familiar lineup that they are playing with. And a strong lineup of Disables. Like Kyle mentioned, you look at the lineup of Liquid, they're kind of limited on their the Disables. They have Ravage and then they have Tusk. And that's kind of, you know, their way of controlling the team fights. You look at the side of TNC, they've got Kunkka, Wraith King, Mirana, they even have Shadow Demon, who I feel like is kind of his own stun anyway now because of how amazing this hero really is. With a 61 pick rate and 60 something percent win rate, this hero is insane in this tournament. And it is also a unit of TNC. They're actually running their own aggro tri lane and they're putting the Bat Rider in the safe lane, making sure that Kuku can actually get something instead of just getting shut down completely if he was left alone or in a dual lane. They want to be sure to try to give Kuku a good game. Let's we'll see how this mid matchup ends up going. As, like Panel said, Torrent, really good spell versus Templar Assassin. You've got to imagine the Kunkka's going to have the edge, right? That's what you'd imagine, yeah. Your Admiral is on board. Two mid laners. Of course, just both heroes very good at getting the right clicks, whether it be with that hard hitting base damage of the Kunkka or the refraction of the TA. We are catching back up quickly there. So they are starting to recover both of those heroes that were aggro tri at first. Now able to start getting something as Michael Toe's even getting aggressive onto Gabby here with that Mud Golem from Kuro. And like Panel mentioned, you know, the Tidehunter landing versus the Wraith King, it's pretty good. You're always going to be able to go for those anchor smashes onto the skeletons. And look, so what we were talking about. There's bottom lane. You said they needed to get out of there. They didn't. I feel like they, they should have They stuck actually... around. And, I mean, you, you, yeah. you foresaw this. You said this bottom lane. Once the level's there on Pat, he's just gonna run them over. Yeah, and, and he does. He comes back down bottom too. I mean, they have the divine favor from Kuroki, like I was mentioning, to bring him up there. But yeah, they're just choosing to actually keep this matchup. It's gonna be really crippling for Miracle, though. You have to expect that's gonna happen. Every single time there's a rotation from Tim's, they can easily set up onto this troll warlord. But they're keeping it this way. They want it. That's why they want to lane it. They want to keep the tide versus that Wraith king. That lane in itself is. Still a bit of a scary one for my control as well on the top. Yep. Has to be careful getting down low, just down to to the mango and obviously a stick, but seeing very low on the HP. In fact, there's the there's the TP. He's gonna head over to the shrine. Looks like they're actually gonna bring the Chen bottom instead of moving the Troll Warlord, so it's still just trying to secure. Hold is the Troll Warlord down bottom. So are the stacks looking at Liquid at the moment, they're not actually setting up any stacks at all here, which we've seen a lot of teams doing, I think, more than ever. We always talk about that stack game. We saw how much, especially EG was doing it this morning. We saw, like, triple stacks all over the jungle. So we'll probably see them back up soon, or maybe Kuroki will send a creep to stack those creeps. Top yeah. lane, arm out, maximizing the damage, getting the tie, bring a hit off the creep, sets up with the X-Mark poke combo, and Mind Control is taken out. Making those early moves and making the most out of getting that level seven nice and early on as the mid lane Kunkka. Yeah, crisp, easy rotations coming out. So the other thing they do have, as we see, just used down bottom right there by Kuroki, that little Seder Banisher, he's kind of keeping that one, not only just to put the pressure in slow, but to remove the sticky stacks from Miracle. So if Miracle is getting gone on, he can use that little Dispel on his teammates to help him out. Back to what's mid, Weehaw. He's coming a little, really a little aggressive. What's he doing in the trees? 
He's, he's got his fist straight up there, surely, yes? Yeah, there's no escape for we. As it's not only the bottom, the top lane, it's the mid lane as well. TNC, we've seen them do this before. They are getting every single lane in their control. And they're getting kills all across the map. We saw what they were able to do. The games that we casted versus Liquid, they ran away with those early games pretty hard in the majority and just were able to just completely control the map. And it's only, it's only eight minutes in, but we're approaching the like 3K gold marks. And the pressure, like we said, Liquid, how do they get aggressive? The Templar Assassin and the Troll Warlord, and I mean, they're still doing all okay. Rolling himself in pretty deep. TNC's still a little careful about how they go on him. They don't want to try and force too much on a support kill. They're losing their mid tower because of it. That rotation, they left to go bottom to gank, and Weeha's like, oh, thank you. He comes in and takes the 1700 damage to that mid tower. Very important for Liquid, that map control that they can get if they are able to actually get that mid tower. So much vision and opportunities they can get from just putting down TA traps deeper. Look at the charge, Cuckoo. Got the Fireflies, who will try and get himself over the charge, but with the Troll Summon, they've got the control. Cuckoo trying to escape, but they have the damage. It's a miracle. Those Axis will find the kill. Liquid now to start to, to even that net worth difference. Back off. GH, even though he's 1-4-1, one, one, he's making the moves around the map with the team to at least bring them back with that. That tag team bonus really coming into play there. With the Aegis on Weeha, definitely look to, to try and push for some of those tier twos, or at least the tier one that does still stand towards that top lane. Yeah. It's still tough to make those like, aggressive moves, right? Until Weeha does have a Blink Dagger or they go for the Tidehunter Blink Dagger, it's going to be a little bit difficult for them to get on top of heroes. You still see them, they are constantly smoking though. They're using their vision. They're Dyer's trying to keep these aggressive moves and keep attack. Liquid able to play on the opposing side of the map because he's trying to make sure that he maximizes the farm for the team. We were worried that maybe they both resort to jungle, but if this is the way they're going to do it, this is a good way to keep the pressure up while farming. But TNC, they're all set up around their area here. These bounty runes. They're gonna look to even go for the aggressive one. They are pinging it out. Gabby does kind of want to go up there, but the Chen, they see those creeps and they know. It's a bit too scary to actually perch forward. And we'll be able to get the two up top though. TNC, so securing the three. Bounty. Just make sure that... Get their BKBs, because like we said for for a Liquid, they have mostly physical damage, but then we look at TNC, they have a lot of mixed and a lot of control. A lot of stuns, as the draft panel had talked about, so these BKBs for Liquid are going to be really needed for them to be able to take those fights. Was well, so of course, a kill around the rune spawning, so TNC again will be able to secure the majority. Three bounty runes for the one that Liquid's going to get the, the chance to grab. They tried to also use that opportunity to get some deep vision down, but as we saw, Liquid was already prepared. They had the sentry down. Miracle easily able to get that one. So Liquid, like we said, they're just buying time. Right now, it's farm farm time for those BKBs. TNC, I mean, they're, they're, they're okay with farming as well. Oh, they certainly are. Yep. With, with this Kunkka Ray King. Midas and Aurelians, right? And Sims, as you mentioned, the fourth core in the making for TNC if the game does go on. They do not mind this passive state of the game. Obviously, Liquid feel like it is the only way for them to play at the moment. You do have to agree. They need BKBs to fight. They really like, do. Troll Warlord into this is way too difficult to fight when he doesn't have it. He's so. pretty much got it. And yep. the same to be said for Weehaas. Definitely, within the next minute when those BKBs are out, you can expect Liquid to start to look to make those plays and, and look to take the fights on their own terms. They have to make a lot happen with those BKBs too, right? Your, your 10 second BKBs are massive because once those start trickling down, that is one of the things that we know about TA is you get to the later stages, you only have a five second BKB to work with, it can be really problematic. So they're going to have both looking to come out actually at the exact same time. So this is a big peak here for Liquid. And they do actually also have vision right now of TNC with this ward here up on that top bounty rune. So a lot of information going for them on the map. Mid lane is still kind of pushing in, so they have to address that before they can make too big of a smoke. So one person will take that one out. And Liquid, we're gonna look to set up here. TNC, they're, they're positioned here on the high ground. I uh, see. This is the, the all important fight for Liquid. They're 4k down, they've got the BKBs. This is the time to swing that net worth advantage back in their favor. Miracle's gonna look to start the fight with a grab round. He's got eyes on Gabby. Jump forward from AUA, he's gonna be the first to fall. Now they'll be able to focus down the rake, and Gabby getting his mana burnt by the defusal. We are picks up the second. The exact kind of maneuver that Liquid was hoping to execute with that smoke and the BKBs. They're able to find a couple of kills, one of them being the big old Wraith King, getting Gabby off the map and opening up some space to pressure down middle lane. 
very methodically, very methodically done, right? The way they wrapped around that smoke. Instead of going, just walking up to the high ground, they sent GH to the high ground, and then they wrap around the back to get the get the squishy supports as well as that Wraith King. Still at this point, like we said, five armor, with five plus six armor. So he just gets easily brought down from these physical heroes of Liquid. And he switched the build. He's actually wanted to go for, for a more aggressive type build onto Gabby, that is. With they pinged it immediately. Yeah, Roki pinged it right away. He's like, they're bottom. It. Yep, they're smoke bottom. He that's, knows. That's the risk you take when you take those power ins when you're smoked. And mm -hmm. either way, it looks like TNC sort of knew it themselves. They grab the rune. They don't try and look any deeper. They don't go up to the high ground. They know that it was very likely to have wards on the area. They've got all their lanes pushed out right now on the side of Liquid. It's go time again. Like we said, those BKBs, they're, all, they're also going to be constantly looking for fights. Also, now I believe. JH is bringing a Blink Dagger. This is also another very oh. crucial item for Liquid. As Kyle mentioned on that draft panel, a lot of different ways that you can, you know, they're telltale the way the TNC spell is going to be coming out. There's a lot of ways that you can get some nice saves coming in from GH. Right, here we go, smoke into Roche. It's going to be a big fight. Hey, it's scanned out, so TNC know exactly what's up. Cuckoo's going to start heading over with the Firefly. Moonlight Shadow being offered over by Tim's. Arrow, As Liquid will go for it. And he can take it out very quickly. Cuckoo's going to try and look for the timing. He's in with the last one. Over to the side, we are still trying to keep his eyes on Gabby. Gabby. Great fire blast slows down. We are with the rest of Liquid collapsing on the Wraith King as Liquid will be able to hold this area around the pit. Armel tries for another poke, but he's already used the BKB. He's got to be careful. He's out of battle. Two big hits from the TA. Bring Kunka down low as TNC back up to the high ground. Tim, Tim's the big limit. He's on the zoom. They are not going to get it though. We are will be able to secure that Aegis. Buy back for GH as he knows now with the Aegis in We Heart hands. This is the fight for Liquid to take. To Torrent out to We Are Mike Chong. Miracle still on the Seascape, trying to desperately run away from those Shadow Demon illusions. GH and Mike Chong, they're still on the front lines, punching up our mail. Miracle, he's thinking about going in, but he's, he's short. Out. He doesn't have the Aegis himself. It's on, or oh, it was on We Are. There's the jump for AU. Taken out, We Are once more. As TNC, they're getting pushed all the way back. Mike Chong there with the wraparound. Bleak 4 for GH. They've found Tim's as well. Uh -oh. As TNC tried their best to time it around the Roche, but this time they won't even get the kill. Both elements going the way of Liquid. They're too tanky. They have too much region and ways of sustain. Coming in from the Chen, he pops the Hand of God, pops a mech. The fight kind of turns on itself. TNC, their damage just is not there. And we see Gabby. He looks like a support at this point. He dies so quickly in the fights from all the physical damage. Liquid, they're just knocking on the racks already. Send a boat down mid. Why make the connection? 40 seconds, no Tim's Liquid, more than happy to stand their ground and look to take this Rax away. Just 26 minutes there, they'll go for the lead in with the lasso. But Snowball forward, Gabby first out of the zone. I'm up close to BKB, but he has to put the BKB in right. It's so much physical damage out, but coming out from Liquid. Miracle with the ult, he beats down Cuckoo. Gabby's out of matter, he's got to back off. The buyback comes in from Cuckoo. They'll look for the drag back with the X mark, looking towards Miracle, but he has to move his speed to get out. We are, he's back in. They look like they want to keep going in, but they don't have tier twos. They look like they want to. I mean, they, they can. I just gotta go over tier fours. Two heroes dead without buyback. This should be Liquid being able to close down the game. Tier fours are falling. TMC can they hold for three? They're gonna jump in. Silence out immediately. On to Gabby. Gabby, he's gotta be careful. His moonlight shadow behind control the ravage. Hits on to three. Gabby's dead to one. They'll look for him a second time. Stun out to Miracle, but we are PKB is back and available as TMC have pushed back. as well. Liquid will retreat. It will offer a little bit of mercy, a little bit of time. We are still being fought by Tims and Armel. I look for the X-Mark, but Tims, he's been slowed down, run down. He's got one lead. The Miracle's in the rain. And we are picked in. And that's Tims set two. And with that, they could certainly have a good shot at closing this out. The fortification is there. Armel is going to try his best with some cleaves, maybe setting them back a little bit, but they have the heal coming out from that back. Got the SD back in place. Seven seconds and Cuckoo's back in. They're, they're going to give him some respect. They're going to back off. They got the tier four. Structural damage but done. Absolutely. All that gold as well. 28 minutes in and the base being exposed. The ancient exposed over the sort of the matter of those last few minutes of gameplay. Four buybacks being used by TNC to no avail.
you have to be wondering if maybe in some of these situations, like Gabby, he needed to go for a different, like an armor item in between mid teams. Like he bought the plate mail now later on after these last few fights went really poorly. But we saw he walks into the fights over and over again, and he just he just melts. I feel like an armlet could have really argued to be a really good choice on him in this one because he just dies way too fast. He's not really ha having any type of impact on this Wraith King. While he has these other frontline heroes, the Kunkka, the Batrider, able to get in there. We'll see it again. TNC just trying their best to slow down this pressure that Liquid's applying. And they just don't have the means to do so. The BKB timings from Liquid earlier just really set everything in motion for their lineup. And too much sustain. The Chen just rallied around Kuroki, having all that different types of healing coming in. Even the Vlads, more healing coming in for those carries. Yeah, you can see. Frustrated. GH still in the zone, keeping it focused. As much as it looked like the game would end, it's not going to be for now. They but do hold the Ancient. They have such a commanding lead now, though. We saw oh. the last few fights without these other items picked up. Miracle, a full Satanic. The Orchid we saw, of course, by Weehan that last fight. And even now a Solo Crest for my control. So these carries, who are hitting extremely hard, now are going to be hitting even harder versus this... What became a super squishy Wraith King after having such a good farm. It really did. It really did. And we have seen TNC make some remarkable comebacks in the group stage. Can they do it here on the main stage? This game... It's getting quickly out of control for them. It feels like their damage is... They've hit a wall of damage, pretty much. Liquid just able to counteract it too much. Sure, TNC, they keep coming back in. They throw a Tidebringer, they throw a Star Storm, then they leap back out. They, allow, they have a lot of different ways to, like, poke and prod. But, yeah, Liquid, they just rally and group up, and it's too much right now for TNC to take. Around this Tidehunter, like we said, this hero has been also winning a lot of games. Just the way that the group up, the team fights that happen, the way that you're able to just counter initiate and just ruin the whole entire idea and the way that TNC wanted to fight. And of course, as you mentioned, sort of that all important hero, the, the power of who gets the Chen in this series. Yeah. And whether we see Kuro being able to grab it for Liquid or Ao being able to bring it out for TNC, yeah. it's going to be quite a, a deciding pick in the drafts. Radiant Absolutely. I mean, you see him. He's 1 0 and 13. It's not even like TNC is like hemorrhaging kills all over the place. Armel is 6 1 and 4 in this game. It's, it's pretty remarkable the way that they can just group up around this hero, around the Titan as well, and just start to close the map and win a couple fights and just snowball out of control. That's what we see a lot happen with these Templar Assassins. These 30-minute pushes, these 25-minute pushes with an Aegis, able to really just take over your advantage. As yeah, Liquid, they're just controlling the map now, and Gabby is trying to find some farm on the map, hiding in the trees with his Radiance off. But Liquid, they want blood. Kuroki wants blood too, look at him. Radiant. Pretty fierce, pretty fierce stance there, by he's, he's got that fighting face on. We'll continue to just clean up the easy free money. Another shrine will fall. Radiance you can tell TNC's feeling pretty attack. desperate. Trying to get any type of forms of farm on the map. Gabby pushing far forward. Cuckoo as well trying to cut waves. The liquid. Nice they go there, hey you. Being smashed by the anchor. We are in with the quick finishing blow. As this five man of liquid just seems a little too powerful right now. This draft for TNC to deal with and hold back at the 32 minute point. Into the base they go, liquid. Uh, Ancient starting to get poked upon by Miracle. Just put him in that front lines there. He has Satanic, he has BKB, he has Solo Crest. Throne's going down, Gabby, yeah, I mean, jump in. Hey, he's going to try for the jump. Snowball comes out, they'll turn quickly, looking to burst him down the first, and in fact, he's down to mana, he's dead without a bounce. Sure, he can't hey. They burn his mana, they burn his life, ravages out from mind control. They're all dying again on TNC as Liquid. We'll push our man back to the base, and GG is cool. This game was over. At least about five minutes ago, they tried for one last time. It's the main stage, you've got to do it. But game one, without a doubt, goes the way of Liquid.